Welcome to another edition of RCE. Again, this is Brock Palin. We've been away for a while, the holidays and such, and being gone with SC, we're all really busy. But we're back. Took us a while, but we're here. Yeah, we're, we're back. It's the end of January, but, you know, it's, it's all good. We were looking for an extra special set of guests. <laughs> yes, right. yes. That's Jeff Squires again from Cisco Systems and Open MPI. Uh, Jeff's a very famous dude. And... <laughs> Also, again, you can find us online at rce-cast.com. You can find old shows there because iTunes only shows the last few. Uh, there's also an RSS feed and um, an iTunes podcast feed over in the side, so you can subscribe with your tool of choice. Yep, and man- mandatory mention of my own blog over there. I think it's li- linked to from rcecast.com. And I felt good because I got linked to from inside HPC this week, so that was pretty cool. It always okay. makes the... the- the corporate overlords happy but but let's talk about what we've got today because uh this is an rce cast first yes yes we have three guests today um i think it and they're all from different places but they're all working on the same collaborative project that's why they're so many different places it is um itaps which they will tell us what that means but we have three different guests we have mark shepherd we have tim um Couches and Carl Olivier Gooch. So, uh, guys, welcome to the show. Why don't you take a moment and introduce yourselves? Uh, okay, this is Mark Shepard. I am the uh, Johnson Professor of Engineering and Director of the Scientific Computation Research at Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. Uh, involved with the ITAPS project in terms of providing primarily uh, tools for supporting adaptive simulation technologies. Hi, guys. I'm Tim Tauchis. I'm a computational scientist in the Mathematics and Computer Science Division at Argonne National Lab. But with a twist, I'm also an adjunct professor of engineering physics at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, and I telecommute from here. I'm Carl Olivier Gooch. I'm a professor in mechanical engineering at the University of British Columbia. Okay, so ITAPS is actually an acronym, so could one of you explain what that is? So the acronym uh, for this incarnation of ITAPS stands for Interoperable Tools for Advanced Petascale Simulations. I call that uh, this incarnation of it because we had a previous incarnation in our first five years, uh, which was TSTT for Terascale simulation tools and technologies so presumably the next one will have to come up with an acronym that has an x in it i think the only question on the next one is 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 it exascale or do we say well we got to stop just using these numbers and we'll just say extreme that seems to be the current discussion that's a really good good idea that'll go as the x and we can use it for exascale and then we can keep using it after that and not have to keep changing the acronym Right. Or you could just go to like the Cyrillic alphabet and then nobody will know what you mean anyway. Perfect. <laughs> that was actually a question I thought of. <laughs> we had so, petascale machines. What was next? But okay, we'll get to that. So what is the goal of ITAPS? Like it's a collaboration. What what is the actual end goal of the project? Well, the the vision is that uh people who write uh application software in scientific computing generally know a lot about the physics, um, generally would prefer not to have to know about how do you deal with uh, unstructured mesh databases or how do you deal with making sure that your your metadata about your problem gets stored and, and, and is saved and reloaded properly and so on. Um, and so we're trying to provide that infrastructure and provide it in a way that doesn't tie you down to a particular uh, implementation, which makes it so that you can switch to something else that happens to do better for your application, for example, Um, and also do it in a way that uh, makes it so that that none of the infrastructure things are the bottleneck issues for your massively parallel simulation. Yeah, so whenever you're dealing with mesh data, meshes and algorithms that work with mesh, usually it's just a matter of time before something breaks, either because the the algorithm you were trying um, 
was implemented with a specific uh, application in mind or, or your your particular data is um, is different from what the algorithm was originally designed for. So being able to, to trade out different algorithms, maybe that do similar things but in different ways, improves the chances that, that you'll actually be able to string together the algorithms that you need to to get the job done. And so that interoperability is really key to getting these things done. Right. Uh, just a follow up on Tim's comment also. Uh, the fact that we're doing implementations of these things with, within groups that have been doing these things for many, many years, uh, we also have implementations that don't have, make some of the same mistakes that others would make if they were doing it themselves because we made this, that mistake 20 years ago or whatever and have learned from it and have capabilities that uh, uh, account for those things. Oh, it sounds pretty much like the same rationale that we have for for MPI, actually, since that is kind of my purview there. So let me let me um, clarify on that. So are, are we talking about middleware here? These are our functions that applications will call from C or Fortran or whatever. They're actually, um, you, you, so ITABS deals at multiple levels, so. Primarily, we advertise ourselves first as a as a common API for accessing mesh and data associated with the mesh. But in the use of that API, um, there are multiple uses. So I'll go over one use, and you guys, the other guys, can can talk about the others. Each of us may have an implementation of that API, so that an application wanting to talk to mesh data uh, can talk through that API or that that functional interface and use either my implementation of it or somebody else's implementation of it. So uh, another attractive feature here is that um, if you've got some piece of code that works perfectly well and you've got your own mesh database that you're perfectly happy with, uh, you don't want to have to rewrite all of that to use somebody's algorithm for, say, mesh adaptation. In fact, that's probably the last thing you want to do. So. Uh, having the standard API makes it so that you can uh, look up in the documentation for, uh, say, the adaptation service you want to use, oh, it requires the following 20 functions from this API. You implement those functions on top of your mesh database, and away you go, without having to uh, change your data structures and or change the way that the algorithm interacts with data structures. Okay, so if ITAPS is all for... You implement these functions so that everybody can access data and, and share things uh, interactively. How is this different than using a common like data storage library like HDF or CDF or XDMF, who we've had on this show before? Well, I think it's largely a matter of a difference between uh, live data in memory and data stored on disk. Uh, HDF5 will uh, give you uh, a lovely hierarchical uh, storage structure for whatever data you want to stuff into it. And that's great, but when you want to use that data live in your simulation, the fact that it came out of an HDF5 file is, is really not relevant at that st stage. Well, a, a simplistic way of looking at sort of the difference is that um, – the, the ITAPS APIs answer questions you might ask about the data. So if you want to know something, you want to know a relationship, it answers the question on the relationship as opposed to just dumping a bunch of data on you. Yeah, and um, the like Carl said, we're definitely geared towards providing access to data that's in memory. So like in the context of a parallel simulation, um, if an application needs to get information about a mesh, especially if we're talking about petascale or ex exascale systems, there's not the option to, to go down to disk and get it and then pull it back. Um, you just don't have time for that. So it's really an in-memory API. So before you mentioned um, somebody talking about, you know, they wanted to implement a new particular functionality and they only had to look up, say, you know, 20 APIs and, and, and implement those. Is your, is the ITAP?